Donald Lab has revealed a very interesting prototype that can be scalable from electric bikes to heavy trucks. It's an in-wheel hubless design which can produce over 3,000 pounds of torque at 800 horsepower. And it has a distinct weight advantage weighing only 88 pounds. But is this the most powerful motor for its weight and is this a good idea to implement a direct drive that can be a universal fit for vehicles? The direct drive in-wheel motor is nothing really new. And even Porsche revealed a prototype back in 1900. The motor came in three sizes and was even retrofitted in a race car. Since the rotor has an exceptionally large diameter, you can get more torque out of this type of motor. But it's kind of a catch-22 because without a gear box, the power density is very tricky to master. If you compare two different radial flux motors, one with a very small diameter rotor and one with a very much larger one, the larger diameter rotor will spin at a much lower RPM. In essence, it's spinning at a far less speed for the same amount of power. The other challenge is that there's a direct correlation with the weight and the power density of the motor, which means that there is more unspun mass in the wheel. So you'd have to have a pretty reliable design that can last for a very long time. Now the donut motor exemplifies this point, because the rotor and stator are positioned on the very outside of the wheel. As a result, it is a radial flux motor that is generating flux perpendicular to the axis of rotation. This radial design allows the motor to be produced at a very cheap cost. So as the overall structure uh, on the inside, there's the stationary bit, and on the outside, there's the rotating bit. So now obviously it's glued to the stand here, but I can show like a Basically, this is the bearing point. Uh, so everything on the inside is stationary on the motorcycle. So you have a, a swing arm connection points and a brake caliper connection and, and those kind of things. And everything else is just a maximized uh, surface area for the air cooling. The good news is, is that this motor has already been implemented into a Verge motorcycle. And it supplies around 130 horsepower at 700 foot-pounds of torque. The price starts at around $30,000, and it will provide data over time in real-world conditions. The other notable development was the 3 kilowatt, 3 pound drone variant. This one to apply moderate torque, yet it's still kind of in the middle of the pack and it's definitely not the most powerful thing on the market when you compare this to something like a U-series T-motor. So is this truly a game-changing motor? I would argue that it's not a universal fit for everything out there. And there's definitely a diminishing return when you get into higher weights and higher power densities. It's going to affect the ride quality and the longevity of the motor is going to be affected at some point. Now, I like the approach from the company that they are making a scalable design. But I was kind of surprised that they didn't market for smaller equipment like forklifts and zoom booms where you have high torque demands at lower velocities. Now is this truly a future proof design? I would argue that it's not because there are many different types of motors that are being researched right now. So the fun thing about motors is you can come up with a lot of different designs. And one interesting prototype was revealed by Deep Drive. This particular one has the stator sandwiched between two rotors, the inside and outside one. It is 20 inches, produces 300 horsepower, and weighs around 80 pounds. It's very interesting because it weighs considerably more than a donut motor, but at the same time, there's more surface area on the rotors. This would allow for a higher RPM, perhaps even greater acceleration. The other option is to go with an axial flux motor. And these are relatively new to the consumer market. The gap between the rotor and stator is parallel to the motor's axis of rotation, and this results in a larger magnetic surface area than radial flux motors. As a result, they have very high power densities, and they could even be utilized in direct drive systems like in-wheel motors. As of right now, companies like Yasser are producing high-end actual flux motors for companies like Ferrari, McLaren, and Lamborghini. They even have integrated a direct drive system into a Koenigsegg Regara, a 1500 horsepower hybrid mega car. However, these motors do not come cheap as the manufacturing struggles to streamline this process at an affordable rate, with 750R motors reaching over 10 grand. That's not even to say that the actual flux motor is the future, as there's research going into actual flux combining with the Vernier design with multiple stators. There's even a superconducting motor that Toshiba is developing that is a 2.5 megawatt, 5000 RPM aircraft motor. 
This is only a couple feet in length, however it needs to be cryogenically cooled and one can argue that we're still quite a ways away from room temperature superconductors. Ultimately the point of this video is that the motor could be utilized in drive in wheel and it could offer high performance at high torque and power densities. Furthermore, you can have hubless designs and it's already been proven that these can work in applications like motorcycles. However, the main challenge of this type of system is that can it be reliable and whether or not it can actually be produced at a cost effective level. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.